I'm here today with Marvin Phillips, and Marvin and I have a, a really cool story, a really cool history uh, together. Just to give you a background, uh, I met Marvin uh, for the first time at a uh, store here, <laughs> shopping for clothes. Um, and uh, you know, the guy there behind the counter is like, oh yeah, he does bodybuilding, you do bodybuilding. And he was with, you know, some really pretty girl. And I'm, I'm thinking, man, one day I'm gonna be at that level, you know, because Marvin is always like so well developed. And um, then I think uh, like in two, two years after that, we competed together yeah, yeah. For, the, for the first time. And um, you know, I, I'm just, I'm so proud to do this interview because this is what bodybuilding is like. I mean, Marvin and I are always neck to neck in competition, but yet you wouldn't know it if you heard us talking backstage. You know that um, aside from that, we're friends and we have a lot of things in common. And um, you'll find out as we, you know, get to know Marvin um, why that is. But um, I'm proud to introduce Marvin Phillips. And um, so we'll start with how you got into bodybuilding. Like what 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 are your roots? What got you into bodybuilding? Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I kind of got into bodybuilding, or at least admiring the physiques uh, based on uh, comic book characters. <laughs> um, I, I used to collect comics, uh, the Incredible Hulk and Wolverine uh, are two of my favorite guys, and uh, <clears throat> so I always wanted to look like them, just as a uh, as a as a kid, and then um, probably around seventh or, or eighth grade, I started actually buying. Uh, the magazines and as I collected the comic books I also collect the, the magazines and so if you went to my house and looked I mean I've got magazines signed by Flex Wheeler from 1987 so uh, I've been a student of bodybuilding uh, since probably about 1987. Wow. Um, hey can't this is a kind of a candid question but I think you told me one time about a story about you thinking you were the Hulk. You got you got you got trapped in your in your garage or something like that's that. That's hilarious. Yes, that's a good memory. Um, yes, yeah, goes back to the my comic book admiration. Uh, yeah, I thought I was the Hulk. I told my my mom that I was the Incredible Hulk. She she insisted that I was not. So uh, I insisted that she locked me in in the garage, <laughs> and that I was going to turn into the Hulk and, and bust out of the garage, which she she uh, she did, and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> so I was I was crushed, and uh, so that was the moment I realized I wasn't the Hulk, and I tried to try to make myself angry, and uh, I just I was looking at it, there was no green happening. So uh, that's yeah, awesome. that's, that's one of my favorite stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, this seems to be uh, like a common theme, I think, you know, and, and with uh, people who've gotten, guys who've gotten into bodybuilding is that, that um, visualizing yourself as that superhero. I think that's pretty cool, though. Yeah. But, so going forward from there. Uh, going forward from there, um, you know, like I said, uh, back in probably the, um, the early 90s then, uh, playing, playing uh, football and running track in high school. Um, I just always admired uh, bodybuilding. I went and saw Lee Haney um, in Toledo, which is where I'm from, back in, I think, 91. Uh, he was at a local gym, so I went and got an autograph from him. And then my dad took me to uh, my first bodybuilding show um, in 1991, which is uh, the key to the city, I think was the name of it, in Toledo. Um, and, and I just remember the posing routine. A guy uh, posed the overall to... Uh, uh, poison by BBD, uh, and uh, I'm like, oh man, this is great. I'm a, I'm gonna be a bodybuilder. This is this. I know I had no idea how I was gonna become a bodybuilder. I just knew that I wanted to do that. So uh, actually, my um, junior year in uh, high school, I quit football to become a bodybuilder. Um, and uh, you know, every, all the guys was like, oh, you got the perfect you know genetics for it. You're you're short and squatty, blah blah blah. <laughs> But uh, I actually don't think I got through two days without my football coach coming to me and saying, uh, yeah, you didn't quit. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> Get in. Oh, we'll see you at practice today. So I'm like, oh, all right. Um, but, uh, you know, and then uh, went in, in college and, and uh, played football and ran track in college as well. And then, you know, even in college, my, my strength conditioning coaches would yell at me. Uh, because I was I was doing bodybuilding workouts instead of the strength and conditioning workouts, so 
Um, but uh, then I, I mean, finally I got got it to 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 compete back in uh, like 2003, 2004, or something like that. Um, and then kind of the rest is is history from that standpoint. So this is an interesting thing because I know I know I felt trapped to this. Uh, you're you know you're in school, but you want to do bodybuilding as well, and. You, Something's got to give sometimes, or at least we think it does, because we, as bodybuilders, we think we're not committed enough to the sport to do well. You got through college while lifting, while doing the bodybuilding lifestyle. Right. Tell us more about that. Um, well, like I said, in, in undergrad, um, you know, I was working out anyway because of football. Um, not always doing the workouts I was supposed to, but then I went to law school. And I knew in the back of my mind that I wanted to be a bodybuilder, um, but the, the regimen of law school that just doesn't allow it. Um, but I always worked out. Um, I started training at this gym back in 1997 when I moved to Columbus and seeing uh, you know Mike Francois and Earl Crosswhite and uh, those guys in the gym. And again, I knew that at some point in time, life was gonna, was gonna take me there. I just didn't know when. So I always maintained my workouts though, um, you know, the dieting wasn't wasn't uh, an issue because uh, you know being a student I was still eating ramen noodles and uh, stuff yeah. like that. But I was still I was still building the muscles and things that that I needed to uh, to build. Um, so yeah, it was just the the time crunch. Um, and then when I got out of law school, uh, I think I was two years out of law school, and really the catalyst that started me bodybuilding was. Um, I ran into a guy, John Seif, at a Chipotle. Um, he said he suggested that I that I get started. Um, you know, I dreamed about it, and then for my birthday that that year, my uh, wife at the time got me, bought me, a, presented me with a package that says, "Hey, here's John Seif. He's going to do your diet for 12 weeks. Um, you know, this, that, and the other. This is the cost of it. Happy birthday!" And that literally wow. was the catalyst that, that started me bodybuilding. So, yeah. Wow, that is some interesting story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Wow, I can't imagine. Here you go, honey. <laughs> I mean, it was, the, it was the best. It was the best birthday gift ever because you know, like I said, I've been dreaming about bodybuilding since 1987. You know, and you know, here I get this is it right here. You know, here you go. This is it's on you. This I've, it's it's paid for, and you know. So then I started contacting John, and we got our workouts and stuff together, and. Uh, Literally, the, the rest is history. It was just, a, it was a great moment. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Okay, so a couple of questions that I think um, are pertinent for, for I think all bodybuilders, uh, especially as they transition from, you know, the, the young years where, you know, you're, you don't have a lot of responsibility, you just maybe just going to school, to the bodybuilder who now is married, is in a committed relationship, to the bodybuilder who uh, has a career, has kids. Mm -hmm. So what, what is your take on, uh, for those bodybuilders that are, you know, they're in a relationship and it, you know, for one, you know, it's hard to find someone right. who gets the lifestyle. Right. I mean, that's number one. I mean, we gotta, we, we gotta take that off the table. Now, let's just say we do find that someone. What's your philosophy on that relationship and bodybuilding lifestyle? Right. It's, it's very difficult. Um, unless you're unless you're into it, you really don't understand how difficult it is. One, it's a, bodybuilding is a culture in and of itself. It's not it's not just a uh, an activity like fishing, you know. And, and it's a hobby, but it's a lifestyle. It's a culture that you have to live. So when you find someone, when as far as relationships go, they have to understand that culture. They have to understand the time commitment um, that uh, it takes to be a bodybuilder. They have to understand. The, the food and the eating, um, and you know the things that come along with dieting, the moodiness, um, the the ten or twelve hour days that it takes just to do the competition, the financial uh, burden of bodybuilding. It's it's really uh, it's that uh, that mistress in, in the room. Yeah. Um, and so the, you know meeting somebody that's that's involved in bodybuilding or the fitness industry is is great. Um, but you know, as long as you, as long as you meet somebody that is at least accommodating to, to your, if it's a passion of yours, yeah. that's that's the most important thing, and that's that's very difficult. Um, but really, it comes down, you know, in terms of uh, being the younger 
Um, you know, I, I think I was 28 when I started when I started bodybuilding. Um, no responsibilities per se, just go to work, you know. Um, and then I actually took a took a step away from bodybuilding for about five years because of those responsibilities that that came. Um, I ended up having a, having a son, um, and then moving moving forward in my career. Um, I'm an attorney and do labor relations and. Uh, just during the, uh, the contract negotiations and uh, things that I have to do, uh, was just taking me away from from gym time and stuff. So um, you really just have to be focused on on the craft of, of bodybuilding. And, um, and and like I said, even when I was in law school um, and I wasn't able to bodybuild per se, I still lifted. Even though I was away for five years, I, I, I knew that I was going to come back. Um, so I still maintained my workouts uh, in my head. I still thought about improvements I needed to make in 2006. That I, when I got on stage in 2012, I wanted to make sure that, that I had. Yeah. So I, I still worked out with a, with a, with a focus. But um, you know, it's it's really about time. You know, and I think it's it's with any any hobby that you have or any activity that you do. Um, you have to prioritize with anything, whether it's with your kids or um, you know your your other your spouse or whatever it might be. So. Yeah, yeah, and this is another uh, I think what's a, a good uh, topic to address because it, it's so applicable as we go forward in life. I mean, I'm 36, you're 30, 37. 37. Okay, so you know we have responsibilities. Uh, that are you know that in some cases will come uh, before our goals and our passion, like being a parent. Mm -hmm. But how do we incorporate our kids into this lifestyle as well? Because I know you know I get a lot of uh, questions like uh, you know why don't you let your kid have sugar? You know all these kinds of things. So how do we incorporate? Uh, you know your your kids into this, you know, because we're this is where we we come together and we have this you know this um, common, if you will, like bond is that you know we have kids that are about the same age. Yeah, actually, you know, we went to school together. Yeah, yeah, and we're single dads, you know. So what do you what do you think about that? Um, I'm I'm lucky because uh, his mom is uh, she does CrossFit now, so and she's uh, she's a, a health nut herself, and she used to train at the, at the same gym. So um, and it, it really is just uh, incorporating uh, incorporating uh, my son into my lifestyle. Um, he's uh, he's 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 always asking me. Um, he's probably my 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 greatest critic because literally if I touch a food that is not on my diet, he immediately, is that on your diet, Dad? My son's four. Um, is that on your diet, Dad? Can you eat that? And if I do eat it, and I say, no, Marv, it's not on my diet. He's like, well, why are you eating that then, Dad? And so, you know what? It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. I love it. Um, and then he was able to come to my, my comeback show, which was the Francois this year, and he was able to sit close enough where I could hear him on, when I was on the stage. So that's, that's just awesome, you know, and he sees me doing it, um, draws pictures, you know, with me with these crazy arms on. So, uh, you know, just incorporating them into the lifestyle, really. And, you know, he knows bad foods versus good foods, and, you know, if you eat a lot, like, bread. He's like, oh, daddy, if I eat a lot of bread, that'll make me fat. Um, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, and I tell him, yes, yeah, Marv, we need to eat protein, need a lot of vegetables, and it's really just raising him in the in the fitness lifestyle, uh, so he never looks at eating healthy as something that he, that was, that's bad, it's just uh -huh. something that he's always had to do. Yeah. So, um, that's been, that's been how I've, I've incorporated him into it. Um, but, you know, and he loves it. He loves coming to my show and he loves to be coming in here and looking at all you guys. Like, Can you beat that guy, Dad? Can you beat that guy? You know, or he'll get the look in the magazines and they're, Can you beat that guy, Dad? So, um, it's, it's really cool. Uh, that's that's an awesome story because, you know, we, we a lot of times as bodybuilders, we get this, you know, we, we fall into that stereotype of meathead bodybuilder, but you know, I'd like to think, and I've, it's been a goal of mine from the very beginning to go against that. You know, I, you know, with my education, with my career, always going against this whole thing that all we want to do is, you know, eat chicken breast and, 
you know, go to the gym and we spend countless hours in the gym and that's all we're about. But that's not the case at all. You know, we, we, we I consider us educated bodybuilders uh, with a life, with responsibilities, with relationships that, that are meaningful. So, um, you know, this, this thing about bringing your, your kid into it and making something uh, positive out of what we right. do. I mean, that's where I believe the real value in, in bodybuilding is, is having a platform and being able to influence people because I'm sure you get a lot of questions like, wow, how do you do this and that? Right. And it gives us a, an opportunity to leave what I call a legacy, leave something positive in people. Absolutely. You know, because if we're doing bodybuilding, you know, that, that we, we have that position where we can make that positive impact. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's something that I, that I definitely strive to do. Um, because, like I said earlier, it's a culture. You know, it's not just something that we that we do. You know, you, you go to the gym and there's a, there's a difference between, you know, guys that are living the lifestyle and cultures versus people that just work out. Um, you know, it's this, that bodybuilding is something that's on a whole other level. It is more than just an activity. Um, like it's a, it's a lifestyle. So, and with that, you know, comes, comes criticism because, um, it, you know, being successful at anything, you have to get extreme. Um, and if the dietary, it's an extreme sport, the diets are extreme, the time commitments are extreme, the financial commitments are, are extreme. Um, but, you know, you do bodybuilding the right way. You, you maintain a positive attitude. You are, you are nice to people and take care of people. And people want guidance, you give people that guidance. Um, and you can you can change perceptions uh, and the way people think about bodybuilding. But sometimes, yeah, it's like, oh, you mindless ogres walking around, self-absorbed, always looking in the mirror, really don't care about anything but themselves. And in some part, that's true, because we have to be self-absorbed. Um, to, 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 do, to do the sport, but um, the, the mindlessness, uh, I think that's something that now is changing, because you see a lot of bodybuilders that are, have other jobs, um, that, are doing, that are making money at the sport, um, whether it be on the internet, whether it be in their personal training, um, so they're more business oriented. I think uh, the bodybuilders of, of today probably are a lot more versatile um, so that in their normal life than bodybuilders were 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. So, last thing, um, you know, we, we have a lot of people who are going to be watching this video um, online and, and through, you know, different, different uh, on Facebook and different. Um, kind of then uh, different sources on the internet. I just competed in El Salvador and... That's awesome. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Not bragging. <laughs> but um, the, what I wanted to say is like, it's incredible, you know, the, the, the um, platform I had there and the questions I would get. And they viewed me as being, um, actually I was in a category called elite, like advanced. And the questions that um, I got um, were really interesting because they saw me as obviously I've, been, I've you know I started competing um, what in 2002 so we're like 10 years later um, and I've been working out 18 started 18 years ago like you so what what would you say to those those people that are kind of starting out because I know that uh, we take a lot for granted in in in, in uh, that. People know what uh, a good protein is or good right. fat is, that kind of thing. Right. But in general, with bodybuilding, what would you tell people? Because I know there will be a lot of, uh, if you will, novice watching this right. that are looking to us like, wow, you know, they've been doing it for a while and they're, they're, they're you know, bringing home trophies and that kind of thing. So to close this off, what would you say to them? Um, to somebody that's, that's interested in doing this, I would say um, ask questions. Um, if, and you know, if it's something that you really want to do and it's a passion of yours, um, do some research. Uh, bodybuilding is very rich in history, and I'm, I'm a history buff, so um, you know you can go, go back and research the, the history. You know, from the 60s. 
uh, Muscle Beach, uh, the, 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 the morphing of bodybuilding from, from you know, the 60s through the 70s, the 90s, golden age of bodybuilding into the early 2000s. Um, you know, look, look at the history of the sport, and it's, 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 a great, uh, it's a great history. And ask questions. You know, the person like myself, person like Dennis, like we said earlier, we love this. And when you love something, you want to share it. So uh, when you come across people that you admire for one reason or the other, or you want to look like them one day, have no, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, my mom always told me a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So um, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions because you just won't know unless you, unless you ask yeah. questions. Um, so just, you know, uh, do, do, do your research. Um, there's so many different products out there now, half of which are garbage. You know, you think about you know, the, the great bodybuilders and physiques from 40 years ago, they didn't have half of the yeah. stuff. So like I said, do your research. Um, a lot of the bodybuilders today endorse those products but really don't take them. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and I ask questions and, uh, you know, once you get into the, the lifestyle, it is a healthy lifestyle. Um, and you know, I'm, sure, I'm sure you would have a passion for it as much as I do and as much as you do. So to, to, to be doing this 10 years later, yeah. um, you know, with the workouts um, and all the, the, the requirements that I talked about, um, it has to be a passion. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And and we're only getting older, you know. So from a physical standpoint, it's harder. And then from a responsibility standpoint, it's also getting harder. But if something's in your blood, it's in your blood. Yeah. So go get it. Yeah. That's that's a great point. Um, you know. That again, we we've been doing this for a while. So there's something that can be said. We're obviously doing something right. Um, one 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 thing that uh, Martin mentioned is you know the health part of it. You know you, you, that's number one. You have to take care of your health, and this is the example, a perfect example of people that have done that. I've gotten crazy and just followed any kind of crazy advice, asked questions, researched, and um, you know we're still doing it. And we, I don't think either one of us. I know, I know, I know. You know have any plans of quitting anytime no. soon. I mean, no. like, we're... I was chomping at the bit for five years, <laughs> yeah. man. I got a taste now, and now I get a chance to compete with this guy again. <laughs> and I, it's, it's awesome. I love being back on stage. Um, love, I love the dieting. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very regimented person, so um, the, the schedule, I love the schedule. I, I did two sports in college, you know, law school, so I'm always a very structured person in bodybuilding. It suits me very well from that standpoint, so I love it. Um, yeah. The lifestyle, being back and seeing all my old friends, moving back into town, so it's great. I missed it, and uh, it's, it's awesome. So Yeah, and we're both getting ready for a show right now right. in Ohio, right. which is September 22nd, 2020. Well, um, this will be the third show that we do together, yeah. and um, well, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm over two. I'm over two right now. <laughs> well, I'm to, I'll, I'll, a little story about that. I remember the first time we competed against each other. We were waiting to go on stage. I'm at the bottom of the stairs, and here's Marvin at the top, and I was looking at him like. Oh my goodness, what, what, what am I doing here? You know, Marvin's real full and everything, and um, you know, it's, it was definitely motivation for me. And what, what was awesome is that as much as Marvin was like at this level, and I'm just like down here, um, Marvin never acted that way. And, um, and that's, that's what bodybuilding is all about, you know, and that's everything that we're talking about. But, um, you know, I'm so proud to bring you guys someone who represents the sport um, very well, who's a champion um, in the sport and um, someone who you can really look at and say, I want to be like him. So it's a, it's an honor to have you here, man. And um, I appreciate it. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I hope you guys get a lot out of this. And, um, you know, these are the things you don't hear when you get into the sport, some of this information. And, and I think it's good to have kind of a to look forward, like this is where I'm gonna be at, and this is what you know I'm gonna look like, and I'm gonna think like after being in the sport for a while. So again, man, awesome. thanks so Thank much, you. man. No I, I'm a fan right here too of this That's guy. <laughs> so all right, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll bring you some more later.